Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Target Nursing. So friend, I'm here again with a new video and today's topic name is Amniotic Fluid at, and as you all know that in previous lecture we have studied about the abnormalities of umbilical cord and in previous videos we have also seen the um, about umbilical cord and now in this video we are going to study about the amniotic fluid okay so before starting the lecture just do like subscribe and share the video so let's start the lecture so friends today we are going to study about the amniotic fluid okay it is also known as liquor amni the second name of amniotic fluid is liquor amni okay it is also known as liquor amni and in today's video we are going to discuss about the amniotic fluid or liquor amni okay so first we are going to see the definition of amniotic fluid so what is amniotic fluid it is a fluid present in the amniotic cavity okay the simple definition is that that the fluid is present in the amniotic cavity but when you uh, write in the exam the answers so you just don't have to write this that it is a fluid present in the amniotic cavity you have to explain that uh, what kind of fluid present in the amniotic cavity what is amniotic cavity and how the fluid forms inside the cavity okay so here the uh, second definition is there the fluid present in the amniotic cavity known as amniotic fluid and also known as liquor amni but you have to also write that it is it is a kind of protective liquid okay which is present inside the amniotic fluid it is a kind of protective liquid which is present inside the amniotic cavity okay protective liquid and this is protective for whom this is protective for fetus okay because inside the amniotic cavity or amniotic sac there is a fetus present okay and this liquid or this amniotic fluid or the liquor amni is a protective liquid inside the amniotic cavity okay and the fluid is also serve as to fest means uh, it is as a uh, work as a cushion for the growing fetus okay it provide a comfort comfort inside the womb to the fetus okay it acts like a cushion okay this amniotic fluid act like a cushion for the fetus okay for the fetus and it also facilitate uh, the exchange of nutrients okay the amniotic fluid also helps in the exchange of nutrients waters biochemical product between mother and fetus so the definition is only that the fluid present inside the amniotic cavity but what does it fluid, fluid do that inside an amniotic cavity or an amniotic sac what happens a fetus is present okay so this amniotic fluid will work as a protective liquid inside the amniotic cavity and it uh, provide a secure environment to the fetus inside the amniotic cavity and it act as a cushion for the fetus so that the fetus fetus can get comfort inside the womb okay and it facilitate the exchange of nutrients okay this amniotic fluid okay this amniotic fluid amniotic fluid helps in exchange of nutrients okay water and biochemical products between mother and fetus so by the definition you can get that it is very simple that fluid inside the amniotic cavity but what this fluid will do it will act as a cushion it provide a protective 
effectiveness inside the worm ठीक है to the fetus and it helps in exchange of nutrients in water and biochemical products between mother and fetus okay this is about the amniotic fluid which is also known as liquid amni and now we are going to see the composition okay now now we are going to see the composition of amniotic fluid okay so the fluid comp composition is 98 to 99% of water inside the amniotic fluid the amniotic fluid is made up of 98 to 99% of water but 1 to 2% of solids okay 1 to 2% of solid and this solid constitutes like organic and organic plus sub suspended particles this 98 to 99% is water in uh, the amniotic fluid is made up of 98 to 99% of water but only 1 to 2% it consists of solids which consists and these solids solid constituents what are these solid con constituents include organic inorganic and suspended particles and what are those organic constituents these organic constituents are protein glucose uric acid hormones urea creatinine okay so the protein is present in the amount of 0 0.3 mg and glucose of 20 mg and uric acid 4 mg and hormones which hormones are present inside the amniotic fluid is prolactin insulin and renin and urea is in 30 mg of amounts okay so these organic constituents are present in different different amount inside the amniotic fluid means the amniotic fluid is made up of these organic constituents okay 90 to 90 percent of water and 1 to 2 percent of solids and this solids consist inorganic organic and suspended particles and the organic constituents are protein glucose uric acid hormones and urea and creatinine okay and inorganic constituents are sodium calcium and potassium okay these are organic constituents and this is inorganic constituents now the features of amniotic fluid okay so what is the features what can be the features like first we are going to see about the color of the amniotic fluid so the amniotic fluid is generally colorless okay what happens is amniotic fluid is generally colorless but near term it become pale straw color because of presence of exfoliated and epidermal cell from the fetal skin what happens normally the amniotic fluid is generally colorless but what happens at the time at Term, near term means when the date of delivery is about to come that time what happens that this amniotic fluid color will become a pale straw color and how the color will change because of the presence of exfoliated and epidermal cells from the fetal skin okay and it may look turbid due to the presence of fernixerosa uh, and uh, this uh, amniotic fluid may look like uh, i mean it has some turbidity inside it or it may look turbid due to presence of vernic caseosa and vernic caseosa is present on the skin of the baby a newborn baby okay and it may cause the turbidity inside the or in the amniotic fluid okay and now we are going to um, see the features first about the color we have seen normally it is colorless but at the term it will become pale straw color because of the exfoliated and epidermal cell of fetal skin and now we are going to see the ph ph of amniotic fluid this is very important question for the competition exams and for the viva purpose that what are what is the ph of amniotic fluid it is alkaline slightly alkaline in nature okay and the third is amount and value and now we are going to see about the values of amniotic fluid means at different different weeks of pregnancy the amount of amniotic fluid will be altered okay and it will be changed so and this is very important question okay this is very important for all competition exams so you have to know that at 12 weeks the amniotic fluid um, how much the amniotic fluid amount will increase and uh, at 20 weeks the amount of amniotic fluid so we are going to study it now so first at 12 weeks 12 weeks what happens the amniotic fluid amount is 50 ml and at 20 weeks it becomes 400 ml and at 36 to 38 weeks okay the amount of the amniotic fluid is 1000 ml and at term when the delivery is near 
it is of 800 ml the amniotic fluid amount is 800 ml but in case of post maturity post maturity means about 42 weeks means the uh, due to the uh, it extend from the expected date of delivery the, del uh, the delivery of the fetus will become uh, will be extended from the expected date of delivery this is called post maturity and it is of 42 weeks normally what happens 37 weeks or 38 weeks the delivery will be happen uh, will be done but what happened in post maturity the fetus will be not uh, fetus will be not delivered or the post maturity can happens in 42 weeks that time what happens the amniotic fluid amount is decreases okay so it became 200 ml and what happens at 12 weeks it is 50 ml and at 20 weeks it is of 400 ml at 36 to 38 weeks it becomes 1000 ml at term it is 800 ml and at term was very important it it may ask in the questions that uh, in competition exams like uh, tell the amount of amniotic fluid at the term okay so 800 ml is the right answer and then the post maturity post maturity the amount of amniotic fluid become 200 ml okay and now we are going to see the sources of amniotic fluid how the amniotic fluid will produced in the uh, amniotic sac or how the amniotic fluid will be will become okay so from the exudates of maternal vessels and decidua first source of amniotic fluid is exudates of maternal vessels in decidua okay so the decidua is the endometrium of a pregnant uterus so it uh, the amniotic fluid will be produced from the exudates of maternal vessels and second one is, is from fetal vessels and it also produced from the fetal urine okay and the important question made from this topic is that the urine output of fetus at 10th week the question has asked many of the time that what is the urine output of fetus at 10th week so that uh, at any weeks it can ask but the 10th week is very common so the amount of urine of fetus is in 10th week is at 10th week is 400 to 1200 ml per day okay the sources of amniotic fluid from the exudates of maternal vessels and decidua fetal vessels and fetal urine okay these are the sources of amniotic fluid now we are going to see the abnormalities so there are two kind of abnormalities present in the amniotic fluid first is color abnormalities and second is amount amount abnormalities like normal amount we have seen that in 12 week it is of 50 ml but at 12 week if it will be more or it will be less so it it comes under the abnormalities okay now we are going to see the abnormalities so first we are going to see the color abnormalities but the normal color of the amniotic fluid is colorless at term it become pale straw color now we are going to see the abnormalities so in abnormalities if the amniotic fluid color is green okay then it will indicate fetal distress okay it will indicate fetal distress green color okay and the if the amniotic fluid color is golden then it will it will indicate the rh incompatibility okay now the third one if the color is greenish yellow that refers to post maturity that uh, and at what time it will be happen at 42 weeks okay the greenish yellow color will refers to post maturity dark red color refers to hemorrhage okay and dark brown or it is also known as tobacco color which is uh, indicate which indicate iud intrauterine growth of the fetus sorry intrauterine death of the fetus take it dark brown or tobacco color refers to intrauterine death of the fetus okay what happens normally the amniotic fluid color is colorless but at the time at the uh, time of at the term time what happens that the fetal uh, sorry the amniotic fluid color become 
pale straw color but what happens if the amniotic fluid color becomes green it indicates fetal distress if it will be golden color it will indicate rh incompatibility but if it is of greenish yellow it will indicate post maturity dark red color indicate hemorrhage and dark brown or tobacco color indi indicates intra uterine death of the fetus okay it is very important question you have to note all these color and their indications that what they are indicating okay now we are going to see the volume abnormalities i have told you the normal volume of the amniotic fluid at different different peaks now we are going to see the abnormalities of this volume okay so first is polyhydrominous and second is oligohydrominous okay so first is poly poly means many Hydro means water. Hydro amnios means it refers to the membrane of the fetus. Okay, so we are going to see the abnormalities or the volume abnormalities. I am going to give you a brief description about it because these are the conditions or the disease conditions in the OBG. So in further um, further classes, we are going to see the detail of these uh, disease conditions or these disorders. Stick it. Now we are going to see a brief descriptions. Like uh, first is polyhydromina. So what is polyhydromina? Amniotic fluid ex exceed 2000 ml. Okay, more than 2000 ml ho jayega. More than 2000 ml ho jayega. Okay. <coughs> see, yahan par 36 to 38 weeks mein 1000 ml tha and term mein wo to 800 ml ho jata hai but agar amniotic fluid ka amount jo hai wo kya hai exceed kar raha hai more than hai 2000 ml se that condition will be known as polyhydrominous theek hai so polyhydrominous can be mild moderate and severe theek hai अभी जो इसमें है mild moderate and severe these three conditions what happens these are divided in three conditions this polyhydrominous can be divided into three it can be mild moderate or severe in mild what happen the DVP is less than eight to eleven centimeter and what is DVP it is a deepest vertical pocket ठीक है deepest vertical pocket it is a I means this is a kind of method okay this is a kind of method which helps in assessing the amniotic fluid volume by the ultrasound okay uh, during ultrasound what happens we will use this dvp and we can find the uh, the amniotic fluid volume okay how can we detect it by the help of dvp okay and it is performed by assessing a pocket of a maximum depth depth of the amniotic fluid what happens the amniotic fluid that will be assessed by the ultrasound and uh, we can get the exact value that how the deep pain pocket is okay uh, which is free of an amylical cord in the fetal part okay so dv uh, dvp deepest vertical pocket is considered as a reliable method for assessing amniotic fluid volume on ultrasound okay so in mild polyhydrominous dvp is less than 8 to 11 centimeter in, in moderate dvp is 12 to 15 centimeter and in severe it the dvp is less more than or equal to 16 centimeter okay <coughs> more than or equal to 16 centimeter in severe okay and now we are going to see the oligohydrominous oligo means in this what happens the amniotic fluid amount will be decreases in poly it will exceed from 2000 ml and in oligo it will decrease from 200 ml ticket is less than 200 ml and in ultrasound or in sonographic what happens the amniotic fluid index ticket the amniotic fluid index will be of less than amniotic fluid index will be uh, less than 5 centimeter so what is amniotic fluid index uh, it is a means uh, it also helps in found uh, helps uh, in detecting the volume of the amniotic fluid by the help of ultrasound okay so this is deepest vertical method 
तो एम्योटिक फ्लूड इंडेक्स सॉरी ठीक है इसमें एम्योटिक फ्लूड इंडेक्स जो होता है डॉक्टर्स में यूज अ फोर क्वाड्रेंट टेक्निक व्हेन द डीपेस्ट अनऑब्स्ट्रक्टेड वर्टिकल लेंथ ऑफ ईच पॉकेट ऑफ फ्लूड इज मेजर्ड इन ईच क्वाड्रेंट एंड देन एडेड अप टू द अदर्स और द सो कॉल्ड सिंगल डीपेस्ट पॉकेट टेक्निक ठीक है एन एफ एफ एन ए एफ आई इज नॉर्मल रेंज ऑफ एटीन टू एट टू एटीन सेंटीमीटर इज कंसिडर नॉर्मल बट वट हैपन्स इन सोनो इन ऑलिगो हाइड्रोमिनाज इट विल बी लेस देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर नॉर्मली कितना होगा एट टू एटीन सेंटीमीटर एफ ठीक है तो इसमें ये कम हो जाता है ओलिगो में ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द एम्योटिक फ्लूड वी हैव सीन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एम्योटिक फ्लूड टूडे एंड द फीचर्स ऑफ एम्योटिक फ्लूड कंपोजिशन वी हैव सीन फीचर्स कलर पीएच अमाउंट वी हैव सीन सोर्सेज ऑफ एम्योटिक वी हैव सीन एबनॉर्मेलिटीज कलर एबनॉर्मेलिटीज एंड वॉल्यूम एबनॉर्मेलिटीज वी हैव सीन ओके सो दिस इज ऑल फॉर टूडे होप यू आर अंडरस्टूड वट आई प्लीज टू यू so in next video we are going to start a new topic which will be fetal membrane so thank you so friends with this we have completed today's topic which was the amniotic fluid and now uh, in next lecture we are going to study about the fetal membranes okay so before going just don't give to forget the feedback of this video in comment section and don't forget to like subscribe and share the video thank you